Welcome back. My name is Alpha Mike One. Today I'm going to show you everything you need to know about farming. When I first started farming, the videos that I watched did not answer all my questions. So I had to figure out a lot of this on my own. So in this video, I want to show you some things that I've not seen on other videos. I also want to hopefully help you avoid some of the mistakes that I made. And lesson number one, make a protective barrier around your farm. Uh, you've got your head down doing what you're doing a lot of the time and you're going to be surprised. Uh, also, it allows you to farm at night. For instructions on how to make this wall, check out my zombie loot farm video. I'll put a thumbnail at the end of this video. Then we'll need to till the soil and you've got two basic choices. We could either till the soil in rows like this where you skip every other square so it looks nice and pretty. But the better option would be to till every square like this so that you'll be able to harvest 100% of your field. The garden hoe doesn't give you a hit marker, so if you want to make these rows, you just pick a spot to start and move straight back and hit left trigger. And if you need to break something, you use right trigger to do that. And then just use that line as your frame of reference and keep moving straight back. If you're going to till every square, just span that left trigger. In the bottom right there, it's going to look like it's giving you an indication that you don't have the proper tool for the job, but you do. And don't worry about hitting it a second time. It'll just give you an indication that you need fertilizer. And be careful if you're tilling around existing plants because you do not get that seed back. You just get an animation of some uh, grass in the wind, and that's it. And if your field winds up looking lumpy like this and that bugs you, it's an easy fix. Just put down some wood frames and then pick them back up. It'll make it all nice and flat. The gardening hoe is kind of an interesting tool. For example, if you want to dig, you can just hit right trigger and you can dig up some dirt. Uh, conversely, if you want to place some dirt or replace some dirt, as long as there's dirt in your inventory, hit left trigger and you can replace that dirt, bring it back to hole. The gardening hoe works a lot like a construction tool in that when you have it equipped in your hand and you point it at an item that has been damaged, it'll show you the damage points on that item. And the skill points are weird. You would think it'd be construction points, but uh, it's actually mining skill points that you gain. So anytime you're using right trigger to dig, break grass, break tree branches, you're actually gaining mining skills. So I did clear this entire field and that bar started at zero. So you can see it's almost halfway. And then at the same time, I was gaining some athletic skills too. And then conversely, when you use left trigger activities like tilling and fertilizing, you gain no mining skills. But you do get a little bit more in the athletic skills department. So with that having been said, let's take a look at the difference between tilled and untilled soil. Uh, for example, if I were to plant these corn seeds on an untilled soil, I would only get a yield of one, which would not be a net gain. But tilled, however, I'll get three. So then I'll have one to plant and I'll have two to keep. Fertilized will bring it up a notch and we'll get a yield of five. Uh, let's take a look at the yield on some other crops. So for mushrooms, you get four on fertilized and three on unfertilized soil. And then for blueberries, you get four if it's uh, fertilized and two on unfertilized soil. And then the same with potatoes. So now that you see the advantages to using fertilizer, let's take a look at how we make it. And there are three basic methods. The first is the worst. We're going to need a campfire and it's going to have to have a beaker equipped. This is going to be the most expensive and it's going to be the most time consuming. Expensive, it's going to cost you two human turds in addition to the nitrate powder and the dirt. And it takes about 22 and a half minutes. The second method is the cement mixer, and it's the only one that takes rotting flesh as a main ingredient. It takes 10 rotting flesh, and it takes about 14 and a half minutes, so it's, it's going to be a pretty viable option for us because 
We're not always going to be able to find human turds, but we pretty much have an endless source of running flesh. Which brings us to our third and best option, which is the chemistry station. It only costs one human turd. I can't believe I'm saying human turd so many times. And it only takes a little bit over 11 minutes. So this is going to be the best option. Uh, I would suggest this be the primary option and the cement mixer pretty much be the backup for when you run out of turds. There, I said it again. The best single source of human turds that I've found is an apartment building that you'll find in these rubble towns. Not sure what to call them. But if you look at it, you've got six floors, and each floor has four toilets. And then this particular building, for example, I rated all the toilets, and I wound up with a total of 16 human turds. When I first started researching farming, some of the videos that I watched had me under the impression that one piece of fertilizer would fertilize, let's say, half a dozen squares of land. And I'm going to assume that that was a previous version, but in the current version of the game, one fertilizer can only fertilize one square of dirt. And to apply the fertilizer, you just need to have it in your inventory and then left click on tilled ground. And you don't have to worry about wasting fertilizer because it will, um, if you've already fertilized that square, it just won't do anything. On first glance, the visual effect of the fertilized soil doesn't seem to be very helpful, but when I looked at it a little further, it's a little bit of a method to the madness. If you notice, one of those white circles occupies four squares, or is shared by four squares, and what will happen is, as you till each square, or as you fertilize each square, that circle will get brighter. So then now that I've done all four, it's nice and bright. So when I look at it at a glance, I can see if it's nice and bright. I know I've hit all four of those squares, but if it's a little more dull, like say that, I can tell the difference between those two. I can tell that I haven't hit all four squares. So now I can look back on this field that I just fertilized, and I can tell just by looking that I've, I've hit all the squares. So now that we have our land tilled and fertilized, the next step is to plant the seeds. And planting seeds is pretty straightforward. Uh, there are a couple issues that I'll go over. Um, basically, when you point that seed at the ground, you're going to get a hitbox. And it's going to show you where that's going to go. And then you hit left trigger to plant it. And what I do is I start at my first square. And then I back up until that hitbox disappears. And as soon as it disappears, I'll hit left trigger. And then by that time, I'm going to get a new hitbox. And I keep backing up and repeating the process. And, and you get yourself in kind of a rhythm. And this will lead us to one of our problems with planting seeds. The hitbox gets a little hinky sometimes. Um, especially if you're trying to plant in between two existing or plant a seed in between two existing plants. Uh, the hitbox is kind of hard to get placed in the right spot. You just have to keep moving your body around until it lands in the right spot is the only thing I can tell you with that. Which brings me to the other issue that I've had with planting seeds, and it's fairly rare. It's only happened a couple of times. If you go to plant your seed and that seedling wants to land on the corner of that hitbox... Um, that means the game is glitching out. It's going to do something weird on you. Uh, what I did was, in the first time it happened to me, I powered through and I kept planting the entire field and then I let it uh, mature. And then when I went to harvest it, the entire field unplanted itself, leaving me with no drops, no produce, no seeds, no nothing. So if this happens to you, I suggest you just quit and save and restart the game. And then it should fix it. You can see here that the, the game has repaired it and those plants are now actually in the center of the box. So it should be fine at that point. And then lastly, the only other question that you're probably going to have is where do I find the seeds? And I don't have a single good source. You're going to just find them in your looting. 
uh, things like refrigerators, coolers, things like that are going to be your most likely suspects. I've found blueberries in snow biomes and I've found corn in plains biomes, but it's fairly rare. More, more often than not, I'm going to find them in kitchen cabinets and fridge and coolers, like I said before. And you would think that a Shanway Foods would be a really good source. So far, I haven't seen it to be especially good for seeds. It's usually better for jars and, and canned goods and that sort of thing. And hopefully that answers any questions you had about farming. If you have any tips that I might have missed, please leave a comment so the rest of us can take advantage of that. I'm Alpha Mike One. Thank you so much for watching.